Did you do that? Whoa! Holy cow! Oh boy! All you have to do is ask. Hey guys, how y'all doing out there? Time for another tutorial from Pinnacle Studio Pro. A while back, I had somebody ask me, do you know how to make a spotlight or a circle to highlight somebody in a sports video? And of course you know I do. I know how to get down and do these things. So I'm going to show you how to get it done. Let's get into it. As you can see, I have my video clip in the timeline track. And I also have my playhead right at the beginning of this video clip. Now I want to activate the timeline track right above it by clicking on it with a left click. And then I want to hit the create title tool. And it will create a title right where my playhead is on the track that I selected. Now this bad boy's opened up, got our text highlighted. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the backspace key and get rid of that, I don't need it. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the shape tool. I'm gonna click on the shape tool and I'm gonna pick a circle. Now I'm gonna go to the face area and I'm gonna make it whatever contrasting color I want it to be. This one's gonna be red. And then I'm going to click on apply. Now I got a nice beautiful red circle in the middle of the screen. All right. So now I want to add another circle. So I'm going to click on, go away from that real quick so that it's not highlighted. And I want to click on the shape tool again. And I want to add another circle. Now this circle is white. But I want to change the face of this circle because I want it to be green so that I can key it out and make it transparent. So here in the fill area, I'm gonna click on that color and I'm gonna bring the reds all the way down to zero and the blues all the way down to zero and that makes it green. I'm gonna click on apply. Now I need to make this circle smaller than the one that was before it. The red one is actually behind the circle. So if I make this smaller by left clicking and dragging down and go into the other diagonal and left click and drag diagonally the other way. I now have a beautiful circle that is red with green in the middle. I'm done with this damn circle. So I'm going to click OK. Next thing I need to do is stretch this out to have it be the same length as the clip of the player. So I'm going to left click here with this arrow in the line so that. I know it's going to drag my clip all the way out and it should lock right at the end. So I'm good to go. Got the circle there on the screen. It's looking pretty, but it's not ready yet. A few things I need to do to make this bad boy beautiful. So I'm going to right click on this clip of the circle and I'm going to go to open effects editor. Now the first thing I want to do is change this from solo to show media and tracks below. So I'm going to click on this little carrot here and I have show media and tracks below. I'm going to move my playhead to the beginning. And I'm going to click on keys, studio chroma key, and it will automatically key out that green so now we can see through the green part and all we have is the red circle. Next thing I need to do is I need to actually do a few things on here. First thing I'm going to do is go to 2D, 3D. I'm going to go to 2D Editor Advanced. First thing I want to do on this bad boy is go from default to no preset. Puts it right back in the middle. Then we want to go to transparency and I want this to be halfway transparent. You don't have to do this, but I like it to be this way because if there's something behind the circle or whatever, like another player or whatever, then you can still see the other things that are behind the circle. Like you can see the lines of the court going through it. So anything behind it, you can still see. That's why I like doing that part. Next thing we need to do is we need to add these keyframes, baby. 
So we're going to have position and size open and we can close back the transparency. So we're going to use position and size to size up the circle and move it where we need to be. So the beginning of the clip, we want our first keyframe. We're going to activate keyframes real quick. And we want to size this circle up to about the size we want. The player that we want to highlight is the one in the black and red in the middle of this circle. So I'm going to bring this down some more. And I'm going to bring my horizontal over and my vertical down. And that's pretty good right there. As a matter of fact, let's size it down some. Cool. So that'll be our first keyframe. Now what I want to do is I want to click the jump forward to the end button. And that player was player number 23. So I know here she is on the last position of the clip. So now I'm going to size this back up. And we're going to move it on to where the player is. Yeah, now why I'm doing this is because what's going to happen from this point here to this point here, the circle is going to try to get to the end. Now that's good for me because what that means is basically as I'm going along, it's always going to be trying to reach the end position. Now the player could move all over the place, but I know that at the end, the player is going to be right in this area. So I like it like this. Now, we got those two bad boys put into place. So here comes the hard part. If you thought it was hard already, this is really going to get on your nerves. We got a buttload of keyframes to make. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide the play here forward to a position. Because right now, she's standing still. Now, remember, I made it so that this first keyframe and last keyframe is actually getting bigger and moving to that last position. So I need to stop it because... She shouldn't be growing and moving right now because she hasn't even moved yet. So what I need to do first, as soon as she starts moving, she's right about there. So we know where this position is. I'm going to go ahead and add a marker here. And I'm going to go back to the first keyframe. I'm going to right click it and do copy. And I'm going to click on this marker. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste the keyframe where that marker is. So what that did was now... It's not moving. The circle doesn't move at all because she wasn't moving at all. So anytime the player is not moving, you're going to need to make sure that you place two keyframes back to back from the time period that the player is not moving. Now, for the rest of the way, she's going to be moving. So I just go ahead, move the playhead to where I want, and make my minor adjustments to keep the circle in the middle. And like you can see right here, move it over again, maybe even bring it down a little bit because the circle is still growing. It's trying to get to that other position. There you go. That's better. And just keep moving and creating your keyframes as you go along. Keep placing the circle over your subject as you move, and then you'll be good to go. All right, we're done with our buttload of keyframes, so we're good to go with that. So now you can see, if we go along, circle follows our subject perfectly throughout the entire video. Now this circle is kind of sharp, and I can still see a little bit of like, you know, the green from the chroma key in here, so we're going to blur this bad boy up. So we're going to go to camera and we're going to go to blur. So we're going to change our blur amount on here to three.
And now we got a much better looking circle. You know, even though you can still see a little bit of the inside, it doesn't look as silly as before with a little bit of green. It's just a little bit of color in there. Everything looks gravy. Great circle to highlight or spotlight your player in a video. All right. There it is. The player highlight effect in Pinnacle Studio 16. All right, people. You know the drill. There's a thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction. Click it. Like it. Live it. Love it. Hug it. Comments. Leave me your comments. If you know a better way to make this video, better way to make this effect, let me know. All right? If you got an effect you want me to do or you got a tutorial you want me to show you how to do, let me know. I can't promise I'm going to do it because I don't do them all. Some of them are better suggestions than others. So, you know, just leave it out there. And maybe I'll get it done for you. And last, but definitely not least, don't you ever forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. Thank <laughs> you.